When wiring a car audio system with multiple amplifiers and other gear, things can become complicated very quickly. How do we provide power and ground to each amplifier and device in a clean, organized way? What are the best practices for connecting signal wires and how do we make sure that all the amps and other gear like DSPs can properly turn on? Why did I add this secondary smaller fuse block and how did I do so? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I'm currently working on a full car audio build in a truck, so let's get into installing all of this gear. So in the last video, I built this amp rack and mounted all of the amps and did a test mount, but it's going to be much easier to do all of this wiring to the rack outside the vehicle. So let's start with getting it removed and on our workbench. With the amp rack out of the vehicle, the first thing I need to do is I need to mount my wiring distribution blocks. Now I'm gonna have a positive distribution block and a ground distribution block that are gonna connect back to the battery under the hood of the vehicle, and that's gonna distribute the smaller wires to each of my amplifiers, as well as an additional accessory fuse block. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be using different gear from show sponsor, New Concepts. Now, I've used these guys long before I ever started the channel. They have a wide variety of different wiring and wiring accessories. I definitely recommend checking them out. It's quality gear at a very fair price. If you guys wanna learn more, check out the link down in the video description. Description. I've had this question before, especially in the video where I showed you guys how I determined the size and did all the calculations for all the wiring stuff. Some of you guys were wondering, why am I using what appears to be two different fuse blocks? But the actual truth is these are two distribution blocks that are flexible because we can use fuses in one of them for our positive lead. And then we can use these guys here. These are called ground links. We can use these on our ground side of the distribution. I've already done my research during the fabrication phase of the amp rack itself where I determined where all these amps were gonna be mounted that I want these mounted in this exact location right here. So I'm gonna use a series of different tools. I'm gonna to use a center punch to mark the center of each of these mounting holes. I'm going to use a transfer punch to make that hole extra deep so that I can start a drill bit in it. The drill bit I'll be using is from this drill and tap set. That's because I'm going to tap each of these holes, which will allow me to use mechanical fasteners like this. The advantage of doing it like this is rather than using something like a wood screw that as soon as you take it out the first time, it degrades the quality of that hold. With a machine screw, we can take this in and out several times. It's not going to hurt the quality of that thread. In fact, if you guys watch the mounting of the amplifiers and the DSP, all of these are a machine screw as well. I'll have a link for all of these different specialized tools for you guys down in the video description. So I've got the distribution blocks mounted. Now I wanna turn my attention to mounting this fuse block right here. But my friends, we've run into an issue. The problem here, and you can see I've got some of these RCA wires ran, the reason for that is I wanna to start to get a feel for where all my wiring is going to be. And I know I'm also going to have to run power wiring from the distribution blocks over to these amplifiers as well. There's gonna be a lot of different wiring running through here. And the problem with having this right here, even though that's really the only spot left to mount it, it's kind of in the way. But then I got an idea. I remembered that in my scrap bin, I had these guys right here. These are some little threaded couplers that I can use as standoffs. So what I did is I marked out my mounting holes like I normally would for mounting this, but instead I drilled through holes and I used a little fasteners from the backside to secure each of these in place. And they're still threaded all the way up to the top. So now I can mount this like so, but I can also have wiring running underneath as need be. So I am going to move this out of the way for now because we're gonna start connecting all of our wiring to the amplifier rack. And to do this, I'm gonna be using the D wire ruler from the guys over at Five Star and Mobile Solutions. They collaborated on this cool tool. What this allows me to do is quickly drill holes that I can use for zip ties in order to secure all of the wiring to the amp rack. Before I can start drilling holes though, I do need to think about the path that each of these wires is going to take. So you can take the wire size that you're using, kind of push it in there, and just get a feel for how it's going to bend and flow. In some of these tighter areas on the amp rack, I'm gonna have to kind of just eyeball things as far as drilling where my holes are going to be and do my best to keep things straight. But those holes aren't over a long distance. There's only going to be a couple of them in a line anyhow. But as far as making these runs here, we definitely want those to be nice and parallel. So we'll be using that ruler. Let's start connecting everything up.
Now that I've planned out all of these mounting holes that I'm gonna be using with the zip ties to hold the power wire and ground wire in, I can start actually applying the wires using the zip ties. Now I'm going to do one of these wires at a time. I did this one already and already cut it because I knew it was so tight. I really wanted to get a good feel for where it was gonna be. But as far as these ones go, there's plenty of room here. They're long they can swoop on in, easy enough to plan. So I'm going to mount this wire first and then I'll come back and I'll mount my wire in here in the distribution block. I'll run it, cut it to length, and then mount it and move forward with mounting each of these. A quick side note, something you definitely wanna make sure you pay attention to is where the head of the zip tie is. Now I want the head of the zip tie to be on the back side of the panel, so that means I'm gonna bring it in from the back side there so that all the heads are hidden, but because some of these holes are going to be shared by zip ties, in other words, one would go this way to hold the wire on this side, and then a separate different zip tie going this way to hold the wire on the opposite side, you wanna make sure that you pay attention to the heads and be consistent with which side you are putting them in on. That way you don't have them running into each other on the back side of the panel. I'll show you guys a clip of that later in the video so you understand what I mean. Another thing that can make your life a little bit easier here, take some boxes of the same size. In this case, I'm obviously using some empty subwoofer boxes and raise this surface up that way you can easily get your hands behind here to work the zip ties as you go holy cow i am loving the way that this is looking what are you guys thinking so far nice and clean we've got the power and ground wires connected to each of the amplifiers connected to the amp rack we now need to flip this over and we're just going to tighten all of these zip ties and trim them all up and here's this shot i was talking about earlier now you guys get an idea why you want to line up all the heads on the same side so that they stack correctly so after i had my remote turn on leads connected to the amplifiers i connected it to the remote out of the dsp that's because this dsp will turn on first and then it sends its turn on signal signal to the amps and in the meantime what I did here is I mounted those remote leads to the board using that same process. Now you may have noticed in the meantime I've also wired each of the RCA leads that connects to the DSP and secured those down as well. RCAs can be a little bit more of a challenge because they have a fixed length unless we're making our own of course but in this case I was able to make do with just kind of swooping them into each amp. With everything mounted here I can now re-add that auxiliary fuse block that I'm going to have mounted here. I'm gonna run the leads from my distribution blocks to this for that. And then I also have a couple of leads that will go along this path here. That's why I have those extra holes. That's where this is also going to be mounted in. Those leads are gonna run over to the amp so that I can tell it to turn on and provide the 12 volt constant and ground. All right, now all this wiring is connected to the fuse block and let me explain this really quick. So we have our ground and our power supply for this fuse block and this power supply here is hooked to this bank of six outgoing connections. So all of these connections are going to be a 12 volt constant which if you follow the red wire, that's what I use for my 12 volt constant on the DSP. Now you'll notice there's this totally separate bank of six more connections here. And the advantage of this is I can use these six connections for switched on leads. Now this is important though, the normal turn on lead from a radio or a head unit, it's not going to give us enough current to power multiple different accessories. So that's why we want to add a relay. If you guys would like to see me make a video about how to properly add a relay into this system, let me know. So in the meantime, I have added that relay. That relay is fed with a 12 volt constant from this side of the fuse block and then once activated by a remote turn on lead it will deliver a 12 volt switched source here with more current that I can use for all my accessories like those LED lights fans and turning on the DSP and all the amps. I also connected all the fuses on the power side of the distribution. If you guys want to see a video about how I planned all the electrical in this system and picking fuses definitely check out my electrical playlist. You also have the ground links attached to this block. The connections I'll still have to make in the vehicle are the power and ground connection to the battery of the vehicle. I'll have to connect that remote turn on lead that comes from the head unit. And then I'll have to send the musical signal I'm gonna probably run along here, in here, and into these in order to deliver that musical signal into the DSP for all that control inside. And then I've intentionally not connected the subwoofers or the speaker wires yet, just because I don't know exactly which way I'm gonna have those running on the vehicle. And it'll be easy enough to just connect them once the amplifier rack is in place. 
Now it's time to get this mounted back into the vehicle. And if you guys missed the last video, definitely go back and check that out because in that video, I go over how this is actually mounted in. Oh my gosh, I am excited for this system. Check this out, guys. Woohoo! This is gonna be fun. I've got the seats installed back in place. And since we took our time to make sure that we planned everything properly, we've got plenty of room here, plenty of room for ventilation and cooling and the seats easily go up into position. Let me go over on the other side. And if we look from the opposite side here, the seats easily go up and into position. I absolutely love the serviceability aspect of this because it's like, oh, let's check on our amplifiers. Oh, there they are right there. If I need to make any adjustments to any of the settings, easy to access on all the amps. If I need to switch out a fuse, plenty easy to get in there as well. Definitely looking forward to this build. And in case you were wondering, yes, the jack does fit back into place, so we retain all the original functionality of the vehicle, and I still have access to my positive fuse block right up here. So we still have a lot more that we need to do on this build. We need to run all of the wiring throughout the truck. We need to get the front component speakers installed and the rear speakers. We need to build our custom underseat subwoofer enclosure that will hold four 10 inch subwoofers. Definitely going to be fun. So be sure to check out those videos that I'll be making as part of this build log series as well. For your next install, definitely check out show sponsor New Concepts for all your wiring and wiring distribution needs. Learn more at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.